God, you are forever at work. Stir among us now, as scripture is read, that our hearts and minds might hear and receive your guidance and good news, empowering us to love you, love neighbors, and love ourselves ever more fully. Amen. Our scripture reading today is the Psalm 99. Today I will be reading from the Common English Bible Translation. Let us listen together for God's good news and guidance for us this morning. The Lord rules and nations shake. The Lord sits enthroned on the winged heavenly creatures. The earth quakes. The Lord is great in Zion. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. Let them thank your great and awesome name. The Lord is holy. Strong king who loves justice, you are the one who establishes what is fair. You work justice and righteousness in Jacob. Magnify the Lord our God. Bow low at the Lord's footstool. The Lord is holy. Moses and Aaron were among the Lord's priests. Samuel, too, among those who called on the Lord's name. They cried out to the Lord, and the Lord answered them. The Lord spoke to them from a pillar of cloud. They kept the laws and the rules God gave to them. Lord, our God, you answered them. To them, you were a God who forgives, but also the one who avenged their wrong deeds. Magnify the Lord, our God. Bow low at the Lord's holy mountain, because our Lord is God and he is holy. So as we turn to reflect on this word, let us pause again for prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's how we opened worship with song. Uh, If Jacob were up here, I'd ask him to sing, but you don't want that from me. So we'll just go with the lyrics. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. God is holy. We proclaim it. We sing it. But I often wonder, do we embrace or even know what it really means and why it matters? In Hebrew, the word for holy is kadosh. The fundamental idea behind the word kadosh is apart or separate. A place may be holy or set apart because God has appeared there. Key example, the place where God appears to Moses in the burning bush is called holy ground. A place may be holy because God is described as living there. Thus, the temple is called holy, and Jerusalem is called the holy hill. In addition, people connected with holy places, such as priests, are themselves sometimes deemed holy. I pray you don't make that mistake here. And even a day may be called holy, if it is set apart. Remember those 10 words given to Moses on Mount Sinai. One of the 10 words tells us, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy or separate from days of work. Kadosh, holy, set apart, or separate. Generally, we like this understanding of holy. It puts all things holy in a neat little box where they are distinct and separate and thus often more manageable. It allows us to compartmentalize what is holy in our lives. The challenge, however, is that viewing God as holy in this way makes it easy to say that God only belongs in one part of our lives, but not the other parts. It also makes it easy to say that we set apart holy time each Sunday to be with God, and that's enough. 
taken to the extreme, some may even falsely claim that while God may be in charge of church or faith life, we are otherwise independent and free to do as we please. And yet, and yet in Psalm 99, God is praised not for being above or apart or separate or far off. God is praised for being at work in the world. God is praised for being a mighty king and lover of justice who brings equity and right relationship to the people. God is praised for answering when God's people call out in the midst of life's struggles. Psalm 99 boldly proclaims God is not separate or set apart from the world or God's people. God is involved in the world, wholly, intimately, completely involved. God is the wholly involved one. Or said another way, as the familiar children's song proclaims, God's got the whole world in God's hands. And God isn't going to let go. <laughs> Indeed, the entire story of God's dealings with God's people bears witness to God's deep involvement in the world. God is the holy, involved one who molded creation into being and literally breathes life into humanity. God is the holy involved one who called Abraham, guarded God's people in slavery, and went with Moses to Pharaoh to execute justice and freedom for the people. God is the holy involved one who answered when the people cried out for bread and water in the wilderness and who led the people through the wilderness by pillars of cloud and fire, caring and involved enough to be visibly present with the people on their long and difficult journey. God is the holy involved one who answered Hannah when she longed for a child and answered Hannah's son Samuel when the people faced peril in battle. Over and over and over, God is the holy involved one who sees the people through their trials, who chooses continuous, close, and caring involvement with God's people in the world. Even when we, even when the people stumble, as they and we often do, God remains the holy involved one, correcting faults and failings, showing forgiveness, and restoring God's people to loving covenant relationship. And God's involvement in the world then goes beyond our imagining in Jesus Christ. As we are about to remember together in Advent by sending Jesus to walk among us, to be God with us, God shows the depth of God's commitment to us. In Jesus Christ, God gets involved to the point of eating with us, laughing with us, crying with us, dying and rising with us. In Jesus Christ, of course, God demonstrates that there is nothing that God will not do to be involved in our lives. God cares that much. God is not the holy set-apart one. Rather, it's God's deep commitment to and loving involvement in the world that sets God apart, that distinguishes God from all other powers and authorities seeking our allegiance. God is the holy involved one, the great potter shaping us and guiding our hands and hearts to help shape the world according to God's desires. God totally reframes what holiness means with deep implications. Because friends, if God is no longer set apart, no longer separate from the world of our or our lives, but wholly involved, we cannot compartmentalize God or our faith. We realize that God is 
the mighty king, the lover of justice, who reigns over all our lives, our work life, our home life, our friendships, our family relationships, yes, including those upcoming Thanksgiving tables, our involvement in the community and in civic organizations. God is the holy involved one who has claim on our whole lives. This realization, or rather reminder, as I look out and know I'm largely preaching to the choir, as they say, this reminder then requires us to embrace the challenging call of Psalm 99 as well, the call to extol, or more literally, raise up God from a narrow view of holiness or narrow place in our lives. We are called to raise up God in our lives, to place God and consideration for God's will for the world first in all our living. It means asking at work, is this policy helping to bring about the just and peaceful world that God desires? It means asking at school or other places of learning, is the effort I am giving honoring the growth that God desires for all people? It means asking at home and in the community, am I demonstrating the same love for others that God has shown to me? When we extol or raise up God, the holy involved one, we strive to be ever mindful of God's will, not just on holy days, in holy churches, with holy people, but rather at all times, in all places, with all people, and thereby we help to love the world that God so loves. Thankfully, God goes before us every step of the journey, particularly when the going gets rough. God didn't set the world on its courses and then leave us to figure out the rest on our own. God is still involved, still speaking, still acting, still working in the world. God is still wholly involved. So hear this good news too, particularly if you're weary this day or this season. We need not do everything on our own. We don't always need to be strong we don't always need to be the best. We don't always need to stand tall. We can and should at times bow down in acceptance to the assistance that God seeks to give and desires us to give to one another. Beloved, beloved people of God, trusting in the holy involved one, our God who loves us and all the world beyond measure and seeks our good at all times and in all places, let us then extol God, and raise up God in our whole lives as the psalmist calls us to do. And truly let us this day and always worship or bow down before God embracing the holy involvement that God offers each and every day in the kindness of strangers and phone calls from friends and the faithfulness and generosity of neighbors near and far. Beloved people of God, in the midst of goodness and in the midst of challenge, God was, is, and forever will be the holy involved one. Thanks be to God. Amen.